Oh, hey, Hoppo. What's going on? Oh, hey, Trent. I'm just sniffing this delicious IPA. It smells super fruity and juicy. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's the hops. They contribute to the bitterness, flavor, and aroma of the beer. In this case, it seems like they're pretty tropical. Hops? I love hops. But I wish I knew more. Well, there's lots to learn. So why don't we go over the ABCs of hops? And maybe we can learn a thing or two about the magical plant that makes our beer taste so great. All right. I'll start us off. A is for alpha acid. This is the main bittering component in hops. And many hop manufacturers actually label the alpha acid on the package. And that can give you an idea of how bitter your beer can be when you add them during the boil. B is for vine. Hops grow in a vine with a B, not a vine with a V. What makes a vine different is that it doesn't have tendrils like a vine, but instead has a Velcro-like texture like the tiny hairs as it wraps around the support and climbs up as it grows. C is for cohumulon, one of the main alpha acids, and it's considered to give the biggest, most intense hop punch. Hops like Chinook are known for their high cohumulon levels, and they're often picked in IPAs for that very reason. D is for dry hop. One of the many ways to add hops to beer. This technique is usually defined by adding hops during or after fermentation. It tends to add a lot of flavor and aroma without any bitterness. And E is for essential hop oils. These oils are what provide aromatic and flavor additions to the beer. And when hops are boiled, it unlocks these delicate flavors and aromas. F is for first ward hops. Another way to add hops. And like the name suggests, this is when you add hops during or right after the wort is removed from the grains. Oh, that's first if you just burn a bag. That's right. And it's said to give the hops more time to infuse and unlock those hop oils for extra complexity. G is for geraniol. One of the many hop oils, geraniol is a very floral in flavor and aroma. If you ever smelt a geranium, then you know exactly what this hop oil is like. H is for hop stand. This is when the hops are added after the boil, but before the wort is fully chilled. It allows it to sit in the warm wort for a short amount of time, usually 10 to 20 minutes. By adding it here, you might extract some bitterness, but mainly you'll be keeping the delicate aroma intact. It differs just slightly from Whirlpool. And I is for isomerization. This is a fancy word for transforming alpha acids into something called iso-alpha acids, which are what provide the bitterness in beer. This is usually done by boiling, and the longer you boil, the more isomerization will happen, meaning the longer you boil, the more bitter it can be. J is for juicy, like this hazy IPA. Yeah, no, no. Juicy is a way to describe flavor and aroma. It usually means tropical fruit like guava, mango, pineapple. And if the beer has a full body and cloudy appearance, well, it can very much look like orange juice. Yum. K is for knockout. Knockout is similar to a hop stand in that you're adding the hops right after the boil. But usually for a knockout, you're adding the hops and then immediately chilling down. L is for lupulin, the powdered stuff that's found in hop cones. There are many acids and oils that live in there. The good stuff. M is for myrcene, another hop oil. Myrcene is most commonly connected to citrus and pine flavors and aromas. It's one of the most widely found hop oils, and hops like Citra, Centennial, and Mosaic are famous for their high myrcene levels. N is for any IPA, or New England IPA, the style of beer that made hop growers around the world very happy. New England IPAs are loaded down with hops, but usually in late kettle additions or in the dry hop. This makes the beer less bitter since there's less isomerization, but the beers are exploding with bright and fruity hop aromas and flavors. Oh, it's the oh. As in hot oil. We named a bunch so far, but some other ones you might hear are humulene, farnesine, and carophylline. Be sure to let me know in the comments how I got all those pronunciations wrong. <laughs> P is for pellet. Hops grow in a bind and they come in the form of a cone. But hop companies have found a way to compress and preserve the hops into a pellet, often called T90 but there are some other forms these days. This makes shipping and storing the hops a lot easier. And in most cases, this is what you'll use for hops, unless you buy fresh or grow your own. Oh, that smells good. Are you okay, Hoppo? You've really been putting back those 7% hazies. Don't worry about me, man. I'm cool. Okay, well, R is for rhizome. This is how hops grow. 
A rhizome is a stem that grows horizontally underground and shoots out vines and roots from it. If you've ever grown your own hops, then you probably bought a rhizome in the early spring. And each year, as a plant is cut back for harvest, you can cut some of the rhizomes to propagate and spread out your hops. But be careful, because hop rhizomes spread like crazy. This, this is for spider. Where, where is the spider? <laughs> oh no, no, spider as in hop spider. Oh, oh. You know the thing that you put hops in during the boil and it keeps the hops from clogging up your pumps? Ah, oh, phew, you scared me, man. Yeah, that works. T is for trube. Trube is all that stuff that sits at the bottom of your kettle or fermenter. It's often a lot of hop matter or proteins from the grains. If you add a lot of hops, you have a lot of trube that can clog up your pumps or take up space in the fermenter. It doesn't necessarily hurt your beer and is actually shown to add some nutrients into the fermentation. But some say it can lead to off flavors if there's too much. You, you is for you suck, man. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hoppo, come on. I'm gonna have to cut you off if you can't cool it. Whatever, bro. I'm just completely under control. Knock. <sighs> v is for volatile. Kind of like Hoppo is being right now. But what I'm talking about are those delicate aromas and compounds that are easily evaporated off during the boil. If big hop aroma is your thing, then add those hops high in oil later in the process. I'll show you, Volatile. Whoa. You all right, Hoppo? Sorry about that, everybody. Well, we're gonna move on. Um, w is for Whirlpool. Like hop stand, but usually a pump is used to move the wort around in a circle in the kettle, making a vortex and trapping the hop matter in the middle. You can also do this with a spoon and a flick of the wrist. All right, Hoppo, you're up. Hoppo, you gotta do X. Oh, well, uh, he was supposed to do this one. So I guess I'll just say uh, X, uh, extract, extract. Hop extracts are pure hop resin that is highly potent and extremely bitter. And they're perfect for super hoppy beers like double or triple IPAs. I've used them a few times on the show and it helps to heat them up with some warm water and then use a strong alcohol to dissolve it before adding. Otherwise, it'll all just stick to the side of your kettle. Y is for Yakima the premier hop growing region in the United States. Yakima Valley is in the Pacific Northwest and is home to many hop growing companies. Over 75% of hops grown in the US come from Yakima Valley. And right about now in late August to September is harvest season. So if you live in a hop growing area, you'll get to enjoy many amazing fresh hop beers that are only available for this short time of year. Go out and get some. That's all right, Hoppo. It happens to the best of us. But you didn't completely miss out. There's still one letter left. Z. Oh, sweet. Z. Well, Z. There isn't much for Z, I guess, besides Zappa, Zamba, and Zatos. Bunch of Z hops. I don't know what I would do without hops. I hear you on that, buddy. There's a lot of other aspects to hops that we didn't even touch on here, but hopefully you got something out of it. And maybe if we do this again, we can do it with another beer ingredient. I'd love to, but that depends on you. Let us know. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Don't disappoint me. Anyway, thanks for watching. And stick around because the next video is all about all green brewing. Bye. 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 Uh, my hair is killing me. You know it'll fix that, right? A little hair of the dog. Bye.